Let's take a look at some other parts of the heart and also some other terms associated with it. Right up here at the top, you see something commonly mentioned with the heart angina. Someone has angina pectoris. They've got pain in that pectoral region. You're talking about this region where you find the heart. This is often caused by a temporary reduction in blood flow. Not enough blood flow generally means not enough oxygen. If something in you doesn't receive enough oxygen, it'll commonly let you know by causing pain. Now that's generally something that's temporary. No real damage done. Could be an indicator of something worse coming about, but at this point, there's no serious damage. But what is very serious, myocardial infarction. This is a more proper term for a heart attack. And break these words down. Myo for muscle. Cardial, of course, for heart. And an infarct is an area of cell death. So if you're saying someone had a heart attack, you are literally saying heart muscle died very bad because once we lose this muscle, you can't grow more of it. That's going to cause serious problems with the heart and they're probably going to get worse and worse as a person gets older. But this here is caused by a prolonged lack of blood flow, right? Very short and temporary might cause a little pain, but this prolonged reduction of blood flow, anything over 20 minutes is when cardiac cell death occurs. Those cardiac cells are very active, right? That muscle's always trying to generate pressure to move blood around the body. And those cardiac muscle cells can only go without adequate amounts of oxygen for 20 minutes maximum. Anything after that, they're going to start to die. Also down here, you see angioplasty, which is basically where they'll insert a balloon-like structure into an area like an artery that has some clogged up region in it, generally due to the things we eat and such, they'll inflate that balloon and try and push that material out of the way. In other words, they're trying to open this artery back up and they may, may place a stent in this area, which helps to push all that stuff back and keep it open if that's needed. Sometimes you hear about coronary bypass surgeries. When this occurs here, generally what will happen, they'll take a piece of a vein out of a lower limb and literally build another passage for blood. So if something, say, go into that cardiac muscle, one of those big arteries like a coronary or whatever's gotten chronically clogged and they can't really open it back up, they'll literally build another passageway for the blood, trying to restore enough blood flow to that heart muscle so that it stays alive. You often also hear about a lot of enzymes. Maybe if somebody has a heart attack, there's many different enzymes that can be checked for different reasons. But here's three of them right here. Streptokinase, TPA, and urokinase. These right here are enzymes in the body that break down clots. Clots are just one thing that can cause a lack of blood flow to cardiac muscle. You suspect somebody has had a heart attack. One thing you can do is check for these enzymes. You see unusually high levels of them means the body's trying to break down a clot. A clot just might be what's causing that heart attack. So that could definitely help you out. Let's also look at this heart skeleton. Now talking about the heart skeleton, there aren't any bones in the heart. We've already been over the skeletal system. You've seen that. But what this is, is a very tough, dense collection of collagen around these valves. When you look at these valves of the heart. They're found near or closer to, say, that broad superior base. So in that general region is where you'll find them. And this heart skeleton serves three different functions. One, it acts as an area of electric resistance. We'll look here a little bit further along at the pathway for electric current through your heart. This helps to keep it from going places it should not. It also provides a site for muscle attachment. When you look at the cardiac muscle cells, they're really attached strongly at the superior broad base. They come down to this apex or point. If you ever look at these cardiac cells, you can see that they're in a circular fashion, sort of like as they go down the heart, they're spiraling around it. That way, when these cardiac cells contract, they don't just squeeze the blood in those chambers, but they also twist and rise. Think of if you had a wet rag in your hand, if you were to just squeeze it, well, you get a lot of the water out of it. But everybody knows if you twist it and squeeze it at the same time, that would get more water out. That's why these cardiac cells are arranged in this spiral fashion. If they'll twist on the way up, that helps to empty those chambers of more of that blood. And the more blood you move out of those ventricles, the better off you are.
but they also help to keep a nice open flow. If you look where those valves are at, they should be completely open or completely closed and nowhere in between. So it helps to keep those open. That definitely helps with your blood flow. Looking at some of the char characteristics of a cardiac muscle cell, their cylinder shape, in other words, sort of like a pipe or a straw is their general shape. They have lots of little branching connections in between the cells. That really helps with uh, coordination helps these cells to communicate and work together. And cardiac cells have to do that better than any other muscle type. These intercalated discs, which are basically ion channels in between the cells, also help to assist with this communication. And generally, cardiac muscle will usually just have one nucleus. But let's look at this electric conducting system of the heart, too. This shows the pathway that all electric signals should take when they go through the heart. So when you look at this electric conducting system, you can see that it has five different components to it. The SA node, the AV node, the AV bundle, two bundle branches, and then lastly, Purkinje fibers. This SA node is found up in the superior part of the right atrium, up there close to that superior vena cava. And it's also called the pacemaker of the heart because this is where all electric signals in the heart should start. Shouldn't be starting anywhere else but this SA node. When those action potentials, electric signals, leave this SA node, it's going to spread across both of the atria. That will cause the atria to contract. And the timing from these different parts, one to the next, is very important. It should take around four one hundredths of a second for that action potential to spread across those atria from the SA node down to the AV node, which is down in the inferior part of the right atrium. Now, after these electric signals reach this AV node, they're going to pass down to this AV bundle. But as it goes from part two to part three, the action potentials are going to slow. The reason they're going to slow down is to give these atria time to finish contracting. Remember, these atria push some additional blood down into the ventricles after they've already mostly filled. So you got to give those atria time to finish contracting. That way they can push as much blood as possible down into the ventricles. So that's why you have that slowing of the signal from part two to part three. This AV bundle <clears throat> is right at the very top of the interventricular septum. Remember, that's that wall that separates your two ventricles. Now, once it leaves this AV bundle, also called the bundle of Hiss, that action potential is going to speed up and that bundle is going to split. As you go down that septum, the bundle splits into two different branches and they're going to travel very rapidly all the way down to the bottom of the heart at the apex. And from that bottom pointy apex, the bundle branches are gonna split out into many Purkinje fibers. This will spread the action potentials to the ventricles and that will cause the ventricles to contract. So we'll look at a picture of that here in just a second. But something else worth mentioning on the heart and the generation of these electric signals, action potentials, is that these first three parts of that electric conducting system can actually generate their own electric signals. These are sort of like backup systems built inside the heart to make sure that it's always working. Now here you can see how many action potentials can be generated per minute, but notice how they're always generated more rapidly. We're talking about more often, not the speed as far as how fast they're moving along through these cardiac cells, which is what that electric conducting system is, right? That's cardiac cells, not nervous system. But notice the SA node generates them more often. That's why they should always start at that SA node. They're not starting at that node and they're starting somewhere else. Somebody's got an ectopic focus. Heart's gonna be out of rhythm and you're not gonna be pumping as much blood as you should. One thing they do when somebody gets this irregular heart rate, among other things, is they might give them some calcium channel blockers. That tends to slow and strengthen the force of the contractions. Often helps with some type of arrhythmia, and that's what makes a good heart. A very slow, very forceful one. It's going to use up less oxygen and pump more blood all at the same time. But look at these parts of this electric conducting system. There's the SA node, then the AV node, the AV bundle. There's the two bundle branches and then spreads through the Purkinje fibers down here around the apex. So again, action potentials will spread from the SA node to the AV node and go across both atria. It takes about four one hundredths of a second. Then once that electric signal hits this AV node and goes to the AV bundle, it's gonna slow. It takes about 0.11 seconds. 
gives the atria time to finish pushing blood into the ventricles. That way they're filled as much as possible. Then again, from that bundle, splits into those two bundle branches. And then once it gets down to the bottom of the heart, spreads through the Purkinje fibers, and that will cause the ventricles to contract. And we'll look at more of this electric conducting system in an EKG a little bit further along. There's also structures on the outside of the heart on the anterior view and the interior right there along with some others.